Another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obiuchi, and thanks a lot for joining us. It's been a very, very busy week for Nigeria politics wise. There's so much that's happened in the political space. I feel like every other day there's a new presidential aspirant who declares their intentions to run for office. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, been a lot in the news. Kaduna State, of course, is still being talked about. We still don't have all the answers that we need with regards to the incidents that happened uh, with the Abuja Kaduna Rail situation, still waiting for the government to give us some answers. Hopefully we get that uh, sooner rather than later. Of course, security or the lack of it is still being talked about a lot. Uh, many parts of the country are on the edge of their seats, especially as politics gets heated up. People are not sure what that means for the polity as a whole, but everybody's keeping their fingers crossed and hoping that we'll get through this season safely uh, without any major incidents. But one thing that we can't avoid is the price of things. Um, the world economy is going bonkers for want of a better word, and Nigeria seems to be right at the forefront of it, charging ahead with crazy inflation numbers, and just the price of goods and services continues to skyrocket. And uh, I mean, that has a spillover effect on everything, but uh, we're going to be talking about a lot, a lot today about business, um, how, it, how it feels to run a business in Nigeria today, and what are the realities for customers as well who have to you know, patronize businesses you know, at a time when um, you almost cannot predict what you would face when you go to the market or when you try to you know, get a service provided for you. I have here with me the president, aircraft and owners, Pilots Association of Nigeria, Dr. Ngoba Alexander, thanks for being here today. Thank you, and th thank you for having me on the podcast. <clears throat> yes, um, there's, like I said, a lot, a lot that needs to be talked about. Maybe we should just start with your core area of, uh, of specialization, because like we mentioned earlier, Kaduna State was in the news a lot. So transportation has been in the hot seat a lot in Nigeria recently. You know, there was an, there was an attack on, on airports. You know, people very, don't feel very safe anymore traveling by road. The trains are seemingly under attack. So the air space still for a lot of people might have been the one place to run to, but the prices have gone crazy. I know a lot of people seem to tie it to what's happening in Ukraine and Russia, as well as the after effects of COVID and inflation and all of that. What's going on there? How soon do you think we might start seeing some sort of respite, if any at all? Um, the world is truly, and once again, I said thank you for inviting me. The world is truly challenged on many fronts. Uh, we've just come out of uh, two years of lockdowns, COVID economy, etc., and we're just coming to that on a global scale. It's affected everything, prices. Then we have this war in Ukraine, and so by extension, uh, Ukraine and Russia being major suppliers of uh, oil, oil and uh, petroleum products, and that's having an impact in Europe. And obviously here, since we, we have oil, but we don't produce the derivatives of that product, so we end up importing them and then paying subsidies for them. So everybody, everyone is stretched, everywhere is stretched, and uh, we have a real challenge in our hands. The problem with transportation, is that uh, it requires fuel and of course future transportation looks at technologies like electricity which even if it were the world the situation as it was today how prepared are we as an economy so transportation has been challenged security has been a challenge security has been a long-term challenge so when you combine the factors of uh, security you combine the high inflation rate as a result of high oil prices high oil prices affect transportation transportation affects the price at which goods get from the markets to your table as well. So all of these things are coming together to make life truly, truly unbearable. And so businesses are hedging. They've hedged for a long time. Individuals need to learn how to hedge in terms of in how to survive in this new kind of economy. So will airfares come down? It's difficult because airfare has inputs. Fuel is about, it used to be 40% of the cost of air transportation. Uh, now it's about 60% because of these hikes, doubling or tripling of prices in many instances. So those numbers are not coming down. The related cost maintenance dollar is up as well, uh, of almost 50%. And so when you add the exchange rate, which is what the airlines buy their services, which is either training or maintenance or any of those things, all of these things add together and increase the prices. So uh, I don't see, economists don't see any reduction in costs in the near term. Uh, we just have to bear up and we have to pri we prioritize our lives in this era. Uh, if you look at, normally when you say airfares rise, you say people will run to land transportation. But we know the challenge. Uh, fortunately, there was real service between Kaduna and uh, Abuja. Abuja. 
but the security challenge creates a, b a bigger problem for consumers because obviously if you, you won't go by train if you think it's going to get blown up or you're going to get uh, you're going to get uh, kidnapped and then road transport had that problem that's why people went to rail so we really have we're assaulted at all fronts as a society and really it starts with dealing with the security challenge if we can deal with that security challenge then we open intermodal transportation routes for consumers so people would have a choice right now we have no choice really yeah. that's the problem and without choice you know how economics works without choice prices go up across yeah. the board that's that's why I, that's what I was going to come to because you know a lot of Nigerians believe in theories and I don't want to use conspiracy theories as a as a blanket uh, right, you know yes. you know theory but you know there's this conversation like well because people now feel or because airline operators believe that they are the last option they seem to be having a ball with this a lot of Nigerians don't understand why. I have to pay over 100,000 naira to go to Enugu and come back. You know, for them, it, it, it's a little too much. Yes. Well, you, why you explain that every other thing seems to be going up? They're like, well, airlines, after all, they're making money anyways. You know, explain to the over Nigeria why this is important and why this was the last resort for business owners. Because you deal directly with people. Correct. And when you provide a service that deals directly with people, it's, it's a little, it's quite touchy sometimes, isn't Correct. it? So you... Let's take one mode of transportation, your car. Uh, it seems affordable because the government subsidizes the price of petrol. What does that actually mean? It means that the government buys a product at price A, say 300 naira, and sell to, sells it to you for 150 naira. It seems almost like a gift. But the problem is that the differential that would have gone in paying the real price of the product affects what the government will spend on education, on roads, and all of those things. So. People want to transfer that to aviation and say, uh, because it's cheaper to travel by bus, because fuel costs are lower, uh, air transportation should be cheaper. But that's not the reality. In many cases now, even as a last option, it's not available. One thing consumers need to be aware is that they always have a choice in transportation. You have an airline called Green Africa that offers a lower fare. Typically, around 25 to 27,000 naira to many of their destinations. But it comes with a caveat, and people keep falling for that. Uh, they don't allow you to carry a lot of bags. So if you're a type of consumer, and we talk about, we see that abroad, if you, the type of consumer that is going on a business trip or not carrying a lot of bags, which is not our typical type of uh, Nigerian traveler, traveler <laughs> uh, you can get a cheaper fare. And then you have the traditional, uh, what you call the traditional airline operators that are benchmarked around 50,000 to 100,000 depending on how quickly you book. So the key is if you can plan ahead, which is also a, a, a problem in our society, <laughs> <laughs> if you can plan ahead, you can get lower fares. But if you wait till the last minute, you pay those higher fares because what airlines do is they do airline economics. If we sell these tickets ahead, it gives us guarantees as to who many, how many people will be carrying on the trip. But if we wait till the tail end, then we've got to maximize because we don't know what those numbers would we'll look like. like yeah. And so if you buy ahead, you can buy cheaper. If you wait till the last minute, you pay. But why are we paying these high prices? Because all of the inputs have increased. Airlines buy most of their services in dollars. The aircraft is bought in dollars. It's leasing, if that's the case, is bought in dollars. The training of the crew is abroad. It's not done here. The maintenance of the aircraft is, made, is done abroad. So the result is that most of the inputs are in dollars. Even the fuel that has increased in price is t typically bought in dollars, just converted to the Naira rate. So most of the inputs are done in dollars. Most of its revenue is done in Naira. Now, the airline therefore receives that money in Naira, tries to convert. The central bank says we don't have available dollars. So they reach into the, what we have termed the secondary market, and it has somehow become official in some sense, when, whereas in reality it's not supposed to exist. But they reach into that market to get dollars when they can and pay for these very high costs. That cost, any business, whether it's airline business or truck business or whatever business, even the guy that pushes your cart at the market must transfer his cost to his customers and that's what's happening in the airline industry that the airlines are transferring these huge and unpredictable costs because you know another thing you have to look at as a business is not just what you paid for something yesterday but the replacement cost and that's where many business people seem to get it right wrong so if you know you bought something for five naira and you're going to replace it at seven naira you have to capture that in the sale of the price so we're ending up paying all these high prices for air travel 
we will pay them in buses very soon because buses would have to figure in their security costs. So it is these costs that get transferred, and that's what's creating these very high airfares, which consumers unfortunately have to bear. Yeah. So, I mean, as a metaphor for what you know, we see in Nigeria, where nothing ever comes down if it goes up with Nigeria, regardless, of, regardless and, uh, of what it is, whether yes, it's it food, is. whether it's you know, services provided or whatever, which is a fear for a lot of people. So I, I, I guess the question now is, Ukraine and Russia hopefully are going to end the war one day. Yes. Things might go back to normal with regards to supply, the supply chain right. of, of gas and, and fuel. Um, could the COVID economy will most likely recover one day? Inflation will drop. Does that mean these things will still never come down if all of these factors, which we are now seeing is the cause for all of these prices going crazy? If, if these factors go out of the way, are we still going to be in this situation? Well, is what you're saying? Economics says that if the <clears throat> price of the fuel comes down, then obviously that savings will be passed to the airlines and they will be able to adjust their fares downwards. But the overriding is the dollar rate. And so until we find a way to, fi or until we figure out a way to make the dollar rate come down, the never dollar has never come down. That's, that's why those that look at history will remember when they used to fly to London for 100 naira. Not dollars, 100 naira, then 1,000 naira, then 10,000 naira, and now business class is close to 5 million naira. <laughs> so these are, it's reflective of the exchange rate. There will be slight adjustments. Prices will come, I mean, prices were 650, and then few, uh, jet fuel prices were 650, they dropped to 500, FS didn't come down. So it's marginal. But the exchange rate, the Naira still went up. So it's the balancing of these forces that have to be fixed within our economy that will bring FS down if they'll come down. But you know, tomato prices haven't come down. So what's going to happen? I was going to ask happen? you that. So <laughs> that's, that's the one question customers always ask. I know it's kind of away from your core area, but you're right. a businessman, so you understand how economics works. Right. People always wonder, why am I buying onions? And they're telling me dollar went up <laughs> if I'm going to buy onions, right. which was gotten from Joss or whatever it is up north. Right. How does that factor in with things that we produce domestically, especially like food? Right. Why does the dollar affect the price of Gary? Well, two factors. Uh, two factors. I'm not an economist, but I work in the investment space as well as the aviation space. Right. Two factors play into that. Number one, uh, the tomato has to be brought from just to Lagos with fuel, with a car bought in dollars and fuel really bought in dollars but subsidized. That's one factor. The other factor is the economic reality of life. The fact that you grow tomatoes in Joss does not mean that we don't care about the price of tomatoes in, in, uh, in Italy. For example, how much shrimp do we see on the table? Not very much, because at sea, the fisherman looks and says, Nigerians will buy shrimp for 500 naira per kilo, but it, Europeans will buy it for $50 per kilo. And so all the shrimp goes to Europe. That affects the price. If you take a Gary, for example, what does Gary have to do with dollars? To the reality is, when somebody grows cassava, he has two choices. The Chinese are in the market buying up all the cassava to make petrochem uh, sorry, chemical products for the international market, which competes with the cassava being consumed to make gari. So whether we like it or not, everything plays around the dollar and plays, and that's how economics works. Yeah. Very, very interesting, because I mean, I understood that, but people have always wondered why. Why, why are you telling me that tomato, the, the dollar has affected, you know, the, the price of things? But it's a very, very, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Yes, it is. I guess is what I'll call it. And, you know, I mean, as a business person who's done business in Nigeria for quite a while, what sort of path do you see for us coming out of what is really, really tough times yes. for doing business in Nigeria, both for business owners and customers? Uh, first, we have to fix our politics. If we fix our politics and put the right leaders in place, we'll fix our problems. The biggest challenge we have as a country and an economy is that we don't produce anything. We import everything. We import toothpick, you know, and there's wood everywhere. We import most products. So if we can find a way, like the Chinese have done, to create productivity within our economy, it will increase what we call our gross domestic product, the sum of all the goods we produce in our economy, which will combat the demand for dollars, essentially. So the, the fact is, we've got to fix our politics to fix our security situation. We've got to fix our politics to fix our economic situation. So the only way out is when we introduce productivity into our economy. If we consume and consume and consume, look, why should we even be talking about petrol prices or jet fuel prices in this era when we're one of the largest producers of, 
of uh, oil out of the ground simply because the refineries don't work and that's about fixing our politics so if our refineries work we would not be importing these products yes there would be external demand for the product Dangote is uh, putting a building a refinery now which will produce one of the largest in the world it will produce a lot of the products we consume but the real question you must ask yourself is if Dangote produces one liter of fuel Europeans buy it for 5 euros and Nigerians want to buy it for 160 naira, 65 naira per <laughs> liter. Is Dangote a businessman or not? He hasn't built this refinery as a government program. So the government will end up again buying that product from Dangote at the Italian price or the European price and giving it to us cheaper, which means that the money, like I started off, that would go to education, that would go to security, it's that would go spent. to everything, will be spent. So the economy does not improve. We've got to start to internalize our problems, solving them from within, solving our economic problems. Until we do that, we're simply just going out. We, we call it a vicious circle, but it's addressable. We have to figure out how to address that. And finally, just for a, a small business owner in Nigeria today, it's been very rough for a lot of people. Yes, it has. What do you tell them to, you know, how do they navigate times like this? Because like I say, it might get even worse. Politics is literally taking over everything. Right. You know, there's almost no attention paid now to the economy, as, right. as it were. Yes. What does a small business owner need to start focusing on in the next, sorry, short to medium term, <laughs> you know, to, to stay afloat? I think one of the challenges we have with small businesses, and I, I work with them quite a bit, is separating what's practical from what's passion. And uh, a lot of small business is driven from passion rather than practicality. And we have to start looking at practical things. And there are lots of opportunities. You know, the world's greatest challenge going forward will be food. And yet, our agricultural land is significantly underutilized. We've got to focus on producing not just the Agri the uh, ground-based agri products, but also, also creating a process to uh, to convert them to economic goods, okay? So uh, we grow cocoa and we export that and we end up with 5% or 10% of the real value of the product, whereas chocolate would give us 70% of that product. Small businesses need to start thinking along those lines to process conversion. What are the real opportunities in, that the economy offers, you know? Growing tomatoes is a good business, but then, of course, there's a tomato paste opportunity that extends there. But the first thing, the biggest challenge we have to face, there are lots of initi initiatives coming out of the central bank. Uh, in terms of subsidies and all kinds of things. People need capital. You know, all the biggest, greatest business ideas don't work without capital. So you have to find capital. But you've got to find and do focus on practical things, considering what the new economy looks like. Thank you very much for all your insight today. And um, I mean, we're all hoping for the best. And we hope that it's not such a long year for us. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you.